Hey everyone. So a lot of people are pretty surprised when they hear about the path that I've taken to become a software engineer at Google. And since I'm just starting this YouTube channel, I figured that I would make a video where I sort of formally introduce myself and share my story. And more specifically, this admittedly unconventional path that I've taken to become a software engineer at Google, to sort of break into the tech industry as a software engineer, and so on and so forth. So without further ado, let's dive into it. Uh, this story begins probably about seven or eight years ago, when I was uh, about a year from graduating from high school. So I was at the beginning of my senior year of high school. And this was right around the time when the movie The Social Network came out. This is the movie about Mark Zuckerberg and uh, the creation of Facebook. And this was also right around the time when Instagram got bought by Facebook for a billion dollars. And I remember vividly hearing about all these things, you know, watching that movie, hearing about the Instagram acquisition, uh, reading about other, you know, entrepreneurial things in the news, like people selling their companies or building their companies. And that's sort of when my interest in entrepreneurship got sparked. It was at that time that I told myself, like, one day I will build my own company and probably in tech. I was kind of interested in tech. Now, on the other hand, I didn't have any coding skills at that time. Uh, I remember I, I just had never learned to code. It wasn't a thing for me. And so when I got into college about a year later, I had this really, really, really negative misconception that if you didn't know how to code already coming into college, and even, you know, more specifically, if you hadn't been coding since you were a kid, you couldn't really start to code then. Like it was too late for you. Really bad misconception, but that's what I thought. And so I remember telling myself like, damn, I'm probably just gonna have to be like the business guy in a, in a team that wants to build a company if I, ever, if I ever do build a company. And so I kind of stayed away from everything related to computer science in college. Really, really bad mistake in hindsight. Um, and so then in, in college, I just kind of jumped all over the place. I remember like I took classes in all kinds of subjects, uh, all kind, I, you know, I explored all kinds of new fields. And right around my junior year of college, so for those of you who aren't familiar with the, the United States uh, university system, you know, there are four years of undergraduate uh, school. And so, Junior year is the third year, right around halfway through my junior year, I was settled on majoring in a major called visual studies. Now, I was just really interested in things like Photoshop and Adobe After Effects, Adobe Premiere. Like I liked like video editing, maybe, maybe CGI, that kind of stuff. At my school, they only had this major called visual studies. And as I quickly learned, uh, during that junior year, it was not really what I was interested in. That major was much more focused on like art history and um, sort of like old school photography. It wasn't really what I was interested in. And so that's when I sort of pulled the alarm signal and told myself like, it feels like I'm wasting my time. It feels like I'm not doing what I should be doing to eventually get to where I want to be. Uh, I couldn't quite put, like, I didn't quite have an answer for what it is that I needed to do, but I knew that it wasn't, you know, studying visual studies and it wasn't whatever I was doing at the time. So I decided to do a sort of drastic switch and I changed my major from visual studies to econ, eco economics, uh, with about a year and a half left of school. Um, I was able to sort of make things work, you know, like get the appropriate course load in. And then I remember like at the end of junior year, so like a couple months after that, I realized, oh, this is not really like, I wasn't super into it. So I made another switch to a major that my school had called mathematical econ, which as the name suggests, is a bit more focused on math. 
And then quickly after that, I realized like I really didn't like econ, especially like in an academic setting. And so I switched completely to just math, okay, pure mathematics. And I remember I had to stay like an extra summer uh, at my school. So I had to do like a, a, you know, summer classes in between my junior year and my senior year just to be able to get like all the required classes in. Now, I like to joke that there are two types of math majors. Uh, there are the math majors who are sort of like math geniuses who actually like have a passion for mathematics and who probably want to pursue it in a sort of like academic way, maybe do a PhD or something or, you know, research or something, something like that. Um, then the other type of math majors uh, is the people who like have no idea what they want to do with their lives and just think that math is like pretty cool, pretty fun. You know, they're pretty good at it. That was me. I was that kind of math major. Uh, but anyway, that's what I settled on. Uh, so my entire senior year, all I did was math. I also took a lot of business classes at the business school um, at my university. Business classes, classes in entrepreneurship. And then I graduated. I graduated and it was exactly like, I think it's three years ago and a few days ago that I graduated. I think it was like May 15th of 2016. Okay, three years ago for, from today. Uh, and when I graduated, I started to look at, you know, jobs. And specifically, I was looking at the kinds of jobs that would sort of like satisfy my interest in entrepreneurship, things that would be sort of like maybe related to the field. So the kinds of, of uh, jobs that I was looking at were uh, analysts in a venture capital firm, like venture capital, super exciting, related to entrepreneurship, uh, product management, Product management was a big one. I was like, oh, cool. If I could if I could be like the person who's sort of helping create a product at a big tech company or tech startup, that would be awesome. That would be like almost like running your own company, except within another big tech company. Now, to my, you know, big dismay, both of these positions, product management and venture capital stuff, required a CS degree or required like heavy technical experience. Like they said, you know, must have been a software engineer at a tech company before to apply to this position. And that was super, you know, sad for me to see. I was like, damn, like everything, I keep getting reminded how much I need to learn how to code, how much I need that CS experience, but I don't have it. And I didn't really have like business ideas at, the, at that time. Uh, I didn't feel like I had the know-how to, to go ahead and create any idea that might pop up in my head. So I felt really stuck. And uh, I think about like two or three weeks after I graduated, I had started looking up, you know, sort of uh, desperately looking up things about coding. And I started getting these ads for coding boot camps. These sort of like three month immersive programs that teach you how to code and how to become a software engineer. Uh, I did my research, you know, learned more about them and decided to take the leap. And that's when I wrote my first line of code uh, about three years ago. That's when I applied to all these boot camps. I think I applied to like two or three, got into the top one that I wanted, Full Stack Academy in New York City, and uh, realized, you know, over the next few months that I loved software engineering. It was super fun. It was that, it was like the thing that I had looked for all my life in a way, but never found uh, that I really enjoyed. And more specifically, like what I really enjoyed is with software engineering, I could stay up super late in my room on my computer and like build something, get that sort of like instant feedback. Uh, you know, the instant feedback that you get when you're building a web app or maybe like coding up an algorithm for, for sort of like algorithm problem. And I just really enjoyed it. And then when I graduated from the boot camp, about three or four months after, uh, I, I figured, hey, I'm gonna just jump into the field as a software engineer. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe look into product management or these other things later. I'm just gonna try to become a professional software engineer. Uh, so that's when I started uh, you know, applying uh, for, for full-time jobs. That's also right around the time that I started working on my company, Algo Expert, which a lot of you uh, know about. And 
then I, I landed the job at Google and the, the rest is sort of history. Um, I've, I've loved being a software engineer since. I've been, I've been a, a software engineer full time now for two years. Uh, I think my, my two year uh, Google versary was uh, a couple weeks ago on May 1st. And that's that. It's just been an awesome journey. So hopefully you all sort of learned uh, uh, something new about me, right? About this sort of unconventional path that, I, that I've taken. And uh, hopefully this will have maybe motivated a few of you who are, who might be like watching this and in a similar position that I was in just three years ago. Like I said, I think I graduated just three years ago and um, just crazy to think like how things have changed. You know, three years ago, I would have never thought that I'd be a software engineer at a big tech company and, and you know, have my own company on the side that's very related to software engineering, you know, and that's, that took a lot of like coding to actually build out. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed and uh, I'll see you in the next one.